Welcome back to Lee TV. I am Lee Harding. My article was published today in the Epic Times about conversion therapy bylaw that passed over there. Let me read this to you and show you some other links. Most people are against what they see and associate conversion therapy with involving, but this bylaw goes a lot farther than that. And I don't think people are paying such terribly close attention to it. I'll show you some reasons why after I read the article. Constitutional advocates and clergy are expressing concern over a new Calgary bylaw banning so-called conversion therapy. The city of Calgary passed the bylaw on May 25th by a nearly unanimous vote. The bylaw defines conversion therapy as a practice, treatment, or service designed to change, repress, or discourage a person's sexual orientation, gender identity, or gender expression, or to repress or reduce non-heterosexual attraction or sexual behavior. Those found guilty of such practices or allowing such practices on their property, landlords, take note, can be fined $10,000 or jailed for a year if the fine is not paid. Marty Moore, a lawyer with the Justice Center for Constitutional Freedoms, argues that the bylaw is too broad. This bylaw is not targeted at abusive or coercive practices, but rather targets even people's voluntary choices about their own sexuality and gender. And to evidence that, in fact, City Council voted down an amendment that would permit adults to voluntarily choose their own counseling and supports in regards to their own sexuality and gender, Moore told the Epic Times. That amendment was introduced by Joe Maglioka, the only counselor to vote against the bylaw. The bylaw excludes services related to gender transition, which means non-affirming therapies could be subject to penalties. Quote, if you're promoting a child to remain in a natal gender identity, in other words, the gender they were born with, that is not expressly exempted, nor is the concept of detransition, Moore says. There's a great concern there could be a massive chilling effect on counselors willing to provide that service. So if you want to help somebody get hormones and surgery or even socially transition to another gender, that's all fine. But... If they want help, maybe returning to the gender they were born with, then no, that, that's, that's something that's vulnerable here. Under a similar bylaw passed in Edmonton, Calgary's, unlike a similar bylaw passed in Edmonton, Calgary's bylaw explicitly allows services that facilitate a person's non-judgmental exploration and acceptance of their identity or development. That phrase is hard to interpret, according to Moore. What you may think is judgmental, another may not. And that subjective determination is a very vague standard to be violating someone's freedom of expression or someone's freedom of religion. Moore says that laws against abuse are subject to criminal code provisions as determined by Parliament, not municipalities. Besides this, he adds, Calgary's bylaw undermines constitutional rights. When a city council decides that it's not even going to allow individuals to choose the kinds of counseling and supports that they want concerning sexuality and gender, that's a fundamental violation of individual liberty that is protected under Section 7 of the Charter. Calgary resident Graham Lauber is concerned by the bylaw, is concerned the bylaw may do more to restrict choice than prevent abuse. Lauber has had feelings of same-sex attraction since adolescence, something that created an internal conflict a few years into his heterosexual marriage. He sought help from a Christian organization called Journey Canada, which he now does communications for. And of it, he says, that was wonderful, loving, caring support that I appreciated that helped me to reconcile my faith and my sexuality in a way that worked for me. He says, that means that I don't engage in homosexual behavior. I'm married to a woman. I stayed faithful to that relationship, but I need help for that. So we're worried that the bylaw would make that help very difficult to find, if not actually illegal. Lauber says the proposed bylaw felt like a bait and switch since it claimed to stop the abusive practices to change sexual orientation. But then when you sit down and read the bylaw, it's much more extensive than that. During proceedings, counselor Gian Carlo Cara said, if counseling work undertaken by a church was deemed to be conversion therapy, they would be in violation of this bylaw. Brian Lavender, lead pastor of Grace Point Fellowship in Calgary, told the Epic Times that the bylaw as worded goes beyond the very abusive, coercive, very shaming therapies that he and other pastors actually oppose. 
We won't be allowed to teach them what the Bible says, that, yes, marriage is reserved between a man and a woman and so forth, that homosexuality is condemned as a sin in the Bible. The bylaw also prohibits advertising for conversion therapy. Kara said that someone saying, you should come to me for counseling, represents an advertisement under the statute. Lavender says, during 25 years of ministry, only 8 to 10 people have approached him for counsel because they felt homosexual attractions, and the bylaw won't change how he responds in the future. I believe people should have the right to choose, he says. I don't think we should be coercive trying to force people to change or anything like that, but when people actually come to the church saying, look, this is something I struggle with, but I want to follow the biblical guidelines for this. Can you help me? Can I come to counseling for you? There's no way we're going to say no. So that's what he says. Now, if you look at the actual media coverage on this, 660 City News, and Tom Ross has done a story here. These counselors are bending over backwards uh, how happy they are with what they just did. And uh, they even got some endorsement from mostly United Church clergy. There's a few Anglicans and Lutherans in here too. It was funny because the Pastor Lavender, he said, look, he says, there's, there's just no way I can look at the Bible and say that, that it teaches anything other than what it does. He said, I don't know how anyone else can. But one of the things that was said in here that I think is technically correct, but it's very misleading for somebody who's not really paying attention to this. It says time and time again, in response to these questions, administration and legal representatives within the city made it clear that the bylaw only prohibits businesses from offering the so-called therapy and does not include conversations people have in private or non-judgmental advice given by faith leaders. The Bible is a book that predicts a final judgment, a God who judges, things like that. So it's very sneaky language to say that it doesn't count. No doubt. I mean, it's... It, it, it's no question here. Uh, I want to point you to a few resources if you want to find out more. The Justice Center, they think in here that basically the municipal bans are out of their jurisdiction. This should be with the criminal code. And there's also a lot of other sorts of things that, that are not really uh, discussed in here that I think are important. The um, If you wanted to even discourage homosexual behavior, let's if for different reasons. So let's say you had uh, a same-sex couple where one of them wanted to be faithful to his partner and not engage with a homosexual activity with someone else and, and wanted some kind of moral support or counsel to, uh, to, to keep them actually be faithful in the sense to their partner. Well, they couldn't have that because technically you are discouraging homosexual behavior, right? So there's, there's problems with this that in the way that it's worded. If you want to know about the kinds of things that are done and what their results are, this is a really good resource for that. And it's in the uh, Journal of Human Sexuality. So it's pretty extensive. It goes through a lot of studies that were in recent decades. Usually people that go through it find that it was helpful because the counselor is not looking at just at sexual orientation. Um, they're looking at all kinds of things. It might be past traumas. It might be past hurts. And so... Uh, in visiting those and finding healing for those, a lot of people found that the process was actually helpful. A vast, vast majority of people found that. Now, it was only in a minority of cases that someone reported that their sexual orientation changed, but there were some cases where it did. Also, there was a specific response to the APA. They were just calling for an out-and-out -out ban. They had actually done this recommendation before they even had a single study to prove it. And that's how political that these medical associations have become. In 1970, when the meetings of the American Psychiatric Association were in San Francisco, uh, homosexual activists stormed into the place and, and intimidated people and psychiatrists and psychologists and called them Nazis and everything. And they were scared by this intrusion, not quite sure what was gonna happen next. And after that, it very much changed the uh, nature of the kind of discussions that were going on there. And then in 1973, they dropped uh, homosexuality from the list of mental disorders. But uh, even the people, both with the APA, uh, as the American Psychiatric Association, and with the American uh, Psychological Association, both the people involved in that have actually... Um, said that, that uh, they think that people should be able to choose these kinds of therapies if they want to. So uh, I'm going to give you the links to that. There was also another article I wrote for Frontier Center, but I will show you that and leave you a link in the description. If you appreciate the unique insight and facts and things that I'm presenting here, I encourage you to offer a tip 
at uh, eternally at gmail.com and uh, help my work and help me to stay alive. Thank you for watching another episode of Lee TV.